I'm going to pause for a quick moment because I'm about to cut this off. But the Remington Ranger, this guy is tough. We made a video about it two years ago. And its usable blade is about nine and a half inches. And I've already used it to carve up this tree that hit our cabin. So I've cut this limb off. I've cut this limb off. I've cut these limbs off. Cut that limb off. Cut all these limbs up with this cheap $80 pole saw. And the thing is, is this part extends, this part extends. And now uh, you can undo the screw and use it as a standalone saw. And I mean, is it the most powerful chainsaw? No. Is it the biggest chainsaw? No. Is it pretty awesome? Yes. For 80 bucks, never having a jockey with a carburetor or a battery to charge, it's amazing. And I'll tell you this, right now I'm running on a 100 foot cord and I use this really thick yellow jacket cable and it works like a champ. So I just got done cutting through with that with the nine and a half inch Remington. Pretty nice, isn't it? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a Mazdam uh, rope come along. We're gonna strap it up here. We're gonna anchor it to the back of my Chevy Colorado in this corner. And we're gonna ratchet up to pull this limb up and get some pressure off the roof. And then um, we may ratchet it up enough to where we can swing it out this way or ratchet it up enough to where we can uh, lop off some bottom parts of the trunk. We're just going to have to see what, what it does, though. So it was hard to film, obviously, while I was doing it, but um, this is the top of the roof. And I'm standing on a ladder and I used it reaching from here to there with the pole saw. Little Remington job to cut that off. So we can pull this off. You know. It's pretty significant. Cut there with the pole saw, cut here with the pole saw. You know, there were actually negative reviews about this saw where people said it wasn't long enough. And I was like thinking, long enough to do what? All right, so I was gonna do this off the hitch of the truck, but considering I may not be able to get done before nightfall, I'm going to use um, either this tree or this tree as an anchor to hold this limb up and take some pressure off of it. So the rope I bought, was off Amazon Sergeant Knots. It's the twisted poly deck. Also looked at the uh, maple uh, leaf ropes um, that were the 100% um, nylon. Uh, these evidently aren't quite as strong as 100% nylon, but they're uh, UV rated and UV resistant, allegedly. So I decided to go with this and also decided to go with this because it's veteran owned, which I thought was cool. I bought the Mazdam uh, long haul rope puller off Amazon. It was like $47.99. No rope included. But I later found out with, um, if you buy it at Home Depot and you get the A20, which comes with a 20 foot piece of rope, it's like with tax, a dollar more than Amazon. Well, in my case, you know, to drive to Home Depot just to buy that would have cost me like 25 bucks in gas. So anyway, I say that to say um, that just just so you know, if you're in a bigger city, you may want to run by Home Depot and get this. And you may say, well, why do I need with a 20 foot piece of rope? And I'm thinking, well, for a dollar or more, why not? Um, and that rope that it comes with is, uh, is the ProMaster rope. 
by Samson, which evidently is pretty good stuff. And one thing you do want to look at if you buy it, buy one of these rigs is you want to make sure that the rope you're getting is a three strand half inch that will fit in the teeth of this. Evidently, uh, smaller ropes or bigger ropes won't quite cinch down when you're ratcheting. And if it is a correct half inch by three strand rope, but it's low quality half inch by three strand, it may stretch so much that it then becomes uh, too small for these grips. And that's of course after repeated uses. And I'm not gonna know if the Sergeant Knots uh, compresses after some time because I'm really just using it to move this one limb. And down the road, I may use it for some other things. But for this video, it's for one use. Now I will say this, I read the reviews for Sergeant Knots on their website and on Amazon and people talked about how uh, it totally kept its shape, this particular twisted polydac in the Mazdam puller and didn't compress too much so that, you know, it worked within the teeth. But once again, that's just someone saying that. I can't uh, verify that. But I'm going to take you all along on this adventure and we'll see how it works. Just some initial thoughts looking at this Mazdam rope puller. This thing is awesome and it looks really high quality and... I'm really liking the way it looks, and I'm very encouraged by it. Now, the one reason why I didn't mind springing the money for this was that what makes the uh, rope puller different than a cable puller is, you know, you can use unlimited amounts of rope with it and just keep ratcheting and not have to uh, reset your come along. And so, for example, this truck, my little Colorado has been fantastic, but sometimes it gets stuck because it's two-wheel drive and the regular come along is it doesn't have the length to sometimes pull me out of the situations I get into and this will be a great backup to have it's a three-quarter ton so it's rated for what like 1600 pounds and my truck weighs like 2200 pounds and its rolling weight is less than that so anyway back to the limb let's make it happen all right, so I've done some looking and I'm gonna use my truck indeed for the anchor on this because the clip back here fits perfectly with it to mount to my class three hitch. And I'm gonna use my truck as an anchor and run the line up to that limb and I'll use it to uh, ratchet on it. I'm also gonna put a blanket on the rope so that in case it were to break, uh, the rope would help it uh, fall to the ground as opposed to snap back and hit me. All right, so I got this strap off Amazon. It's 22,000 pounds rated. And I'm gonna run this around the top of this limb up here. Like basically right there. And attach the rope to it. And then run the rope to the back of the Colorado, which is behind this tree, and attach it to its class three hitch. And then I'm going to put some pressure on this tree and pull it up in a way. I parked at this angle because I want to pull it up in a way so that it pulls back this way and doesn't swing to the left or right. Um, at least until I can get it up, up and off the house. All right, we've climbed up on the roof. We've got this guy right here. The strap. We're gonna run with a bowling hitch, which um, retains something like 85% of knot strength, which is gonna be plenty for this job. And um, there's a part of me that's tempted to try and cut this right now. And we just might do that. I just, I know this is pretty heavy. I don't want it slamming on the roof, even though it's right here. Um, so I'll, I'll contemplate that. Anyway, we're gonna run the root rope from here to the back of the hitch of the Colorado. Use the rope and winch this thing up. And uh, use the chainsaw to start lopping off pieces of it, working our way up here to begin to drop this piece of log. I realize there's probably 
you know, a hundred ways to do this, but this is the way we're going to do it. And um, for people at home who've wanted to see the damage up close, this is what it did. So it landed on that purlin. Broke these off. Another limb also hit the top of the roof up there and kind of caused a little crack in it. 